Hello, Sonnet here. I hope you are doing wonderfully. Just a really quick intro. So the video you're about to see, I actually filmed last week while I was making my Granny Square book blanket video, but then while editing, I realized that that video was just way too long. So I decided to split them up into two videos. So without further ado, here it comes. Here is me from last week talking about all of the Amigurumi and sewing books that I have purchased recently. Now, since I did pick up this book, I thought it would be really fun for me to go ahead and do a crochet book haul for all of the books that I have picked up in the past month and a half. I didn't buy a single new pattern in 2023 because that was my new year's resolution. And so once 2024 hit, I went kind of crazy. <laughs> the first one is this Crochet Kittens by Mary Liss Lily. And I actually got this one at the used bookstore for $5. And I just thought it was really cute. It has a whole bunch of kitties in it. And for five bucks, you get a bunch of cute cat patterns and who doesn't like to crochet cats? I really like the size of this. I think this one would be really fun to travel with. And I really look forward to seeing how these patterns work up. And once I make a cute little kitty, I'll let you know my thoughts. The next book I picked up is this Mini Amigurumi Animals by Sarah Abendio. You guys have probably seen this book everywhere. I really liked the idea of this book because I love to make keychains for my craft fairs and the keychains are some of my best sellers. So I thought, why not add more cute little patterns to my collection? That way I can make all of the cute little keychains that everybody seems to love. Next up is Sweet Crochet Friends but this book has been on my Amazon wish list for a really long time and I decided to pick it up especially because I think this Billy the cat with his little fishing pole is so cute. Apparently I'm really into cats right now and I think the photographs in this one are just perfect. I mean look at this darling little doll on her bicycle. That photograph is just perfect and also the Billy the cat has this cute little illustration that goes with them too. Oh I just love it. So happy to finally have this one in my collection. I can't wait to start making some of these. I feel like this little cow here is going to be perfect for the springtime. Next up, I got this Mama Made Minis Knotted Loveys. So my dear friend Megan from Lilac and Lace Crochet really enjoys this book. And after speaking with her, I thought I would go ahead and get this one. I typically don't make loveys or stuffies that are along this line, but I just couldn't pass up on this book because it is something so much different different in my collection. And I just think all of these patterns are so cute. I can't wait to make this little Yeti. He is going to be the first one that I make. And I have been really enjoying working with chenille yarn more and more every day. And so I can't wait to dive into my new chenille yarn stash and make something super fuzzy and fluffy and plushy. Ugh, really excited to have this one. Next up, we have Beetles, Bugs, and Butterflies, A Crochet Story of Tiny Creatures and Big Dreams. This is by Lydia Tresselet, and I saw my dear friend Cindy from the Roomy Mill made a darling little butterfly slash larva, just adorable little cutie named Clara, and I just became obsessed with the idea of this book. So I decided to pick this one up. Look at how gorgeous this inside is just right off the bat. Oh my gosh, you have the life cycle of the butterfly. I think that is so cute. So I don't want to share too much, but I am going to show you just a cute little sneak peek. You actually get like this adorable storybook that goes along with all of the crocheted bugs. And I think that is so cute. I've seen this done a couple of times, but I've never had a printed book that does this. And I just love it. And these little beetles bugs and butterflies are just bound to make me happy. <laughs> Going along with like the keychain theme, I did pick up a hundred micro amigurumi. This is by Steffi Glaves and there's a hundred patterns in here. Now I did make a little tiny mini jellyfish and it was a lot of fun and I have been interested in working up some micro crochet this year but I got this book mainly to work with DK weight as well as worsted weight yarns so that I can again make lots of fun keychains for my craft fairs. 
And this book is actually broken up into different sections, such as myth and legend. Look at that cute little witch. Oh my gosh. There's a travel section. If that doesn't get you in the mood to take a vacation, I don't know what does. <laughs> and the darling around town section. There are definitely more sections as well. There's a hundred of these things. I am so excited for this book. These are going to be the perfect breaks in between bigger projects. So if I need to to get something made that day if I'm feeling like I want to be really productive but I need a break from my amigurumi that's taking me weeks to make I can whip up one of these micro amigurumis and feel like the day was a success Next up, I got Lula and her Amigurumi friends. This is by Dasha and Kate from Granny's Crochet Hooks, based on drawings by Noor Abdallah. Now, I love unique and stylized Amigurumi. Amigurumi that where you look at them, you know exactly who that designer is. And I think these fit the bill. When I saw Opa here, I just had to have this book. I think the details of these Amigurumi are out of this world. Just look at the embroidery on his shirt. Look at his hairy legs and his socks and sandals. This book even has a pattern for his little radio that he carries. I think patterns like these are just absolutely incredible and I need more of them in my life. I just love the style of this entire book. I need to find a weekend where I just sit down and crochet Gary here. This is going to be the very first one that I make. I just love this Amigurumi. And I knew this one was gonna be one of the first ones I made, but then while I was looking at the pattern, I discovered this one little detail that just put this one over the edge for me. And that is Gary's beautifully tattooed chest. I think the embroidered tattoos on this Amigurumi just are absolutely wonderful. I want to make this one so bad. He does seem like he's going to take a bit though. He doesn't look like it's a, you know, afternoon project. So I'm looking for the perfect time when things slow down. Hmm. Does it ever slow down? No. Um, where I can really focus on making Gary. Oh, I can't wait to make him. And then Opa is definitely next. Followed soon by Oma. Now, if I could be this cool as a grandma, my life will be complete. Which leads me to my last Amigurumi book that I have purchased since January 1st, and that is Amigurumi Adventures. This is a book by Claire Cooper, and I'm really excited to announce that this is going to be my next book in my The Good, The Bad, and The Amigurumi series. If you haven't seen my Imkin's Good, Bad, and Amigurumi video, be sure to check that one out. But I am currently working up a few patterns out of this book so I can give you my full in depth review on if you should be picking this one up. That's it for my Amigurumi books, but that's not all for all of the books that I've purchased. Oh no, absolutely not. I went crazy with sewing books as well. You guys know I love to make felt cuties and I'm starting to really enjoy making some sewn stuffed plushies. So naturally I had to get books for that hobby as well. <laughs> We'll be going through these relatively quickly, but I did get Ginger Melons Embroidered Animals, Heirloom Animal Dolls to Sew, Embellish, and Treasure. I just thought all of these little embroidered faces were so cute. Look at all of these darling little animals. I just love the embroidered details of these, and I think this is going to be a great way to really help me improve my embroidery skills because they're pretty lackluster right now and I need all the practice I can get. I then also got The Wonderful World of Rose Minuscule, Eight Whimsical Animal Friends to Sew. This is by Lawrence Bonnet. And again, I think the embroidery details of these are really cute. I really like the style of these stuffies. I think they are so sweet and have just this really sweet vintage feel to them that I absolutely love. These ones might be kind of interesting because Olivia here actually does have a knitted cardigan. So I'll be able to dust off those knitting needles and brush up on my knitting. Uh, I believe some of these also have crocheted pieces as well. So can't wait to dive into the wonderful world of Rose 
and make some of these really quirky characters. Next up, we have Luna Lappin and Friends, A Year of Making. This is by Sarah Peel, and I saw that Highland cow on the cover and knew I had to make it at one point in my crafting life. I mean, just look at this coat that Luna Lappin is wearing. I think that is so gorgeous. I think my kiddo is still a little young to appreciate dolls such as this. These are definitely like heirloom pieces, but I'm hoping that as time goes on and I make more and more of these gorgeous hand-sewn dolls that she and other people will really appreciate the time and just beauty that goes into making something like this. And I just love it and hope that the things that I make will be treasured for years and years. And I don't know, I just thought that these were going to be the perfect addition to my craft book library that I have. Then I picked up So Fantasy Toys by Melanie McNeese. Now I did get these ones because they are easy patterns that look relatively simple. A sewn toy like this is definitely going to take a lot of time and patience, but sometimes I don't have patience and I wanna make something like yesterday. So I got this one to satisfy that itch where I need to make a sewn toy, but I can't have it take me weeks and weeks to make. So this one has more simple and easy patterns that I should be able to whip up in a couple of days. And again, they are so cute and quirky. Look at this little alien. I think he is so cute. And if I can find a really good fabric store where I can find some unique and interesting fabrics, the possibilities of these toys are endless. Lastly is the book I am really excited to have, and that is The Wind in the Willows Felt Friends. This is by Cynthia Treen, and I love The Wind in the Willows. So when I saw these, I got so excited. Now, these are felt friends, and so they're actually on a smaller scale than most of the ones I just showed you. So I'm really excited for this one because they're going to be more in that scale that I really enjoy working with. And when I saw just these adorable felt critters from The Wind in the Willows positioned in these darling little scenes, I became so excited. Now, from my understanding reading through this book, I believe a lot of these characters are actually designed to fit within like the dollhouse scale of a lot of the dollhouses and dollhouse furniture and things that you get at the store. I am a kid at heart. That's why I love to crochet and sew toys so much just a giant child and the idea of making these iconic characters and then being able to position them in darling little dollhouse scenes is so exciting to me. I do have a really cool copy of Wind in the Willows that I found at the thrift store a few months back. So who knows, maybe I'll read Wind in the Willows and make a couple of those characters while I do so. And that's all I had to say about that. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you are having a wonderful week. I hope you're having a wonderful February and I will see you all a little later. Bye.